Hi, everybody. It's Julia Bersall for EllenHudson.com. Welcome to Hello Monday. Today, I'm going to be doing a rock and roll inking technique on some solid stamp images. And I've done this before with pigment inks, but it can help to take a slightly different approach when working with water-based dye inks. Now, I've got all the images I wanted to work with loaded onto an acrylic block, and that's just because it's going to help me uh, speed things up and work faster. So I've got my Mini Misty loaded with some 110-pound Nina cardstock, and I've already mounted a leafy vine here from the Rustic Botanical set onto the lid of the Misty, and I'm going to ink up with Catherine Pooler's Green Tea ink. Now, I didn't quite get um, the inking well done or the impression all that well done, so I'm just going to ink up a second time and then impress right over the top of it. It's perfect. It's going to be spot on because I'm using the Misty. Now I'm going to take a darker ink color. This one is called Spruce. And then I'm going to take a cloth. And you can use like a wet wipe or some kind of a you know washcloth, something like that. But you're going to dab off a lot of that ink. And then when you go ahead and impress a second time over that first impression, you're going to have a really lovely shaded effect. So now I'm going to pull that uh, stamp off and throw it over there onto the acrylic block I have sitting over there and grab another image. And I'm just going to continue repeating this process with all the images to get this really cool shaded effect. And it's going to look really nice and gradual because I'm actually dabbing off the darker ink. After I make my first impression with the lightest color ink, then I'll come in with the darker ink. And you don't have to necessarily clean off your stamps unless you're concerned you're going to have some serious cross-contamination. But for the most part, if you're working light to dark, you're not going to have an issue. So I decided I wanted to beef up the darker color of two fruity on this so I'm going to ink it up a second time and then like I said to get that shaded effect I'm daubing off some of that ink color using a cloth to get that really nice blended effect and so I'm going to be stamping each image twice to get this effect but because I'm working with water-based dye inks this is going to give me that really nice blended look so I'm just going to do that super fast and then I've already die cut all my images and put some foam mounting tape onto the back of them. I've got an A2 card I've already made from some white wood grain cardstock. And I'm planning out my little kind of like 3D collage that I got going on here. And once I'm satisfied with how everything's kind of piecing together, I'm just going to go ahead and peel off the liner paper and get all of these mounted in place. And I do futz a little bit. Everything doesn't go precisely the way I had originally planned it, but um, close enough and all the pieces kind of fit together. Now, as a finishing touch, I'm going to take the finished card and throw that into a paper plate here. And this is just to catch the excess. I'm going to grab some black acrylic paint and tap that onto an acrylic block and take a paintbrush that's kind of wet. I'm going to daub off the excess water onto some paper towel there. And then I'm just going to flick that paint all over the surface of my card. And I do get a really nice fine spatter. You do want to be careful you don't overdo it and end up, you know, with a card that looks like it's got chicken pox. But... <laughs> This is a really great way to just add a little bit of subtle texture and interest to your project. And so I'm coming in here. I'm reaching that point, though, where I'm about ready to go. You better sit on your hands, girl, or you're going to mess it up. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm going to stop at this point and give you a close-up view of how those spatters look. It's an awesome effect. This is a really fun fall card using the Rustic Botanicals. We've got all the supplies listed down below in the video description and over on the Classroom blog. And if you enjoyed today's video, please give us a thumbs up. Thanks for watching.